hello everyone welcome to my channel electrical and computer engineering project in this channel i will make video tutorial on electrical and computer related projects and if you have not subscribed to my channel you can click on this subscribe button and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notification every time i upload a new video and you can also visit my blog from the link above and you can follow me on twitter and you can send me message if you need anything so we have created our expired.php before we have shown all our information in one table here in this page and uh, but we did not uh, make two different uh, table for return and expired information but now we will add two button here for uh, showing uh, the data in different tables so that our admin uh, can easily find different uh, information about a student who has not returned the book yet and uh, can make the fine calculation that will be easier for the admin so we will work on that today so let's just go to the styling and let's change the styling a bit first inside the main let's add left padding Then we will take the container box to the upper margin. For that we need to go to our container class and uh, add a margin top. We need negative margin here to take the container box in the, to the upper position. Okay, now it is alright. Now we just need to change the width of our container box. But you will see whenever we will change the width of our container box, the form will be out of that box. Because we have added a padding, a fixed padding before that form. Now let's go back to our styling of our form that is in the top the class name was search here you can see the padding was 850 pixel a fixed value for this um, padding so when we if we change the container size or if we use it in another device then you will see that the form will always take 800 pixel as the left padding so we need to change this from pixel value to the percentage value if we use percentage instead of pixel this will take uh, the 80 percent of the white available so that's how we can always make it a fixed value by using pixel and by using percentage instead of pixel now we will just decrease this value Okay, now let's go back to our container class and here we will add two button for our return and expired. So first one will be returned. Okay, let's make it uppercase letter. And then another button. That will be expired. And we will add our bootstrap class name here. Now you can see two button here. Or we can add this button here too before the form. And we can add another div box before and after this button.
Now let's add some space between them. For adding space, we need to write ampersand in BSP. We can change the color of this button. For this, you know that we can just go to inspect and select a color that we want to add in the button and just copy the hex code and add it inside our main code. Background color, hash and then this code. And the text will be yellow. Okay. Now we just need to change the color for our expired button too. We can just copy this and paste it after this. Just change the color to red. Now if we click on these buttons, we will see only those values inside that table. We will use this same table for showing that value. So here we need to work on this part. Let's make this a comment here let's add the break and other thing a comment now if we click on this return we will only see the return value for that we need to change the query here after this inside the PHP here is our form we don't need to change the form but after this we need to change the PHP code for our query and first here we will modify this code only here we have used uh, ascending um, the values in ascending order but we will change it to descending order so the recent value will be in the top position And here is our table. We will use this table only to show the values uh, so that we don't need to write uh, three different tables for showing three different values. We will use only one table but three different query that will be inside our if condition. And we need to name the button that we just added. There is one button here already, so we need to name the button submit 2 and 3. Let's add name submit 2 for our return button and type will be submit. Copy this and add this inside our third button. Just change the name from submit 2 to submit 3. Now if the button is pressed, so for now we will check if the second button is pressed or not. And else if, that means if second button is not pressed or um, if third button is pressed instead of second button, then we will do something else so here is our two condition if second button is pressed or if third button is pressed and there will be another else if both the button is not pressed then first let's add the query here for our second button and inside the third button too the same query we will just modify this query a little bit you can see that all the other thing that we need to show will be exactly same. We just need to change the condition, the where condition. We have used the condition as uh, if the approved status is not yes or blank. So we will change this. We need to just add one where condition here. If approved status is and then we need to add a variable here that will be our return button. So if return button is pressed then dollar sign return variable will be 
inside this wire condition and another one will be dollar signed expired exp and on other condition will be deleted now after this we will go back so for submit to it will be return everything is all right so we just need to create those variables later here after this we will include else and then if both these are not true then we will add this query that will be like the previous one and we will cut this first query we just need to have three query inside three condition if else if and it else now here you can see that we have used a variable here we just need to copy this variable and this is the exact same variable for return so we can just copy this and change the name below copy that and paste it inside this if condition change the name to dollar sign return as we can see this is for our return and there will be another one that will be dollar sign expired exp and this variable will be like this too but the value will be different that will be for our expired we can just find this value from our database too here you can see that for our expired we have written this and copied this inside our database so we will just copy this from here and paste it here now we got our two variable so our code should be working properly now if we press on return button then we will get return only return values inside the table and now let's copy this result variable in every condition and delete the one that was before here okay now it should work properly okay it is not working so there is something else i need to change let's recheck again okay i need to add the buttons inside a form i forgot that let's add the form before and after this form tag sorry button tag and the form inside the form tag there will be method post and action will be blank now this button will work properly there is our two variable here that we are using then inside if the but second button is pressed then here we can see then a different query for our return variable and the result variable will run that query and if the third button is pressed then we will get the third query inside the result variable or if both of these are wrong then we will get the variable value inside the table like we got before all those variable all the value of expire and return will be inside the table and then this variable result variable will be inside that row and that value will be shown inside that table now let's see if this is working properly or not let's refresh it okay now if we press a button we will see return okay you can see only return value and if we press on expired we can see only expired values are here inside this table and if we don't press any button then we will get all the values inside a single table with all the values together that's all for today thank you